So we're back, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce my colleague, Mark Cox, who is uh, the Vice President of Security at the Apache Software Foundation, to give us our opening keynote. So thank you, Mark. Thanks. So the company you're working for right now is probably freaking out about software supply chains. If you're based in the US, you'll no doubt have come across the executive order. Your companies are only wondering if their products are going to be classified as executive order critical, or what that means to the hundreds of open source dependencies that they have. So I'm Mark Cox, and I've been freaking out about Apache security since 1994. Uh, as Rich said, I'm VP of security for Apache. I also have security related roles at OpenSSL, OpenSSF, CVE, and Red Hat. Now, the executive order is targeted at commercial software, but the NIST guidelines provide general techniques and processes that are equally applied to open source. And no matter what, open source is going to end up getting entangled into it. It's widely accepted large percentages of commercial software has open source in them. So these companies are going to end up looking at our projects to see how well we fit these criteria and how well we meet the guidance. Then they're going to have some of their software labeled as executive order critical, and they're going to have to do really careful guidelines to that software. And certainly some Apache projects are going to end up being a critical dependency to some critical software somewhere. Now, unlike many past efforts, this order actually might be a good thing. It's really trying to be comprehensive and actually address the problems that we face. So it's worth us spending a little bit of time figuring out how we align Apache and what we can do both at an organizational level, but also a project level. Not just because it's a tick box for some US centric government mandate, but because if it helps make our projects more secure, then it's a great outcome. So where do we start? Well, let's look at what we do now at Apache. We have a security committee whose main work is providing a policy for handling security vulnerabilities across all ASF projects and performing some steps of that policy. So we have a main reporting address, security at apache.org. Uh, that gets about 17,000 emails a year, and that can be used for any issues in any project. So a report comes in, we do the initial filtering and triage, and then we forward it to the project's PMC mailing list. That's the private list, which has a subset of the committers on it. The project is then left alone to investigate and triage the issue and then let us and the researchers know if they rejected it or accepted it. So that becomes about a thousand real threads a year and about 400 actual vulnerability reports. Now projects can, if they want, have their own security at their project name.apache.org address for reporting issues. And the advantage of that is a project can then have a different subset of people, including the different committers on that list. And the downside is they have to wade through an awful lot of spam. In any case, the security team is a member of those lists, so we can track and provide metrics across all the reported issues in all the projects. Now, because all the projects are volunteers, we do need to keep track of all those open issues and make sure they're all dealt with. We need to ensure that the issues that are important and critical are dealt with quickly, but without overloading each of those project teams. So we'll chase projects, we'll liaise with researchers and, uh, and, and the press if needed. Being a board committee means that we report that as details of what we do to the board every month. But it also gives us board power so we could take actions if there's unresponsive projects. We try never and hopefully never have to do that. So when an issue is accepted by the project, we give it a CVE name. And that leads to about 150 of those a year. We're a CVE project candidate naming CNA authority, which means we have an API which lets us allocate CVE names and an easy way to submit them back to the database so they show up within an hour or so. We maintain an internal web tool that allows projects to self-manage their own vulnerabilities and whilst maintaining a bit of consistency. Being a CNA also means that if a third party finds an issue, an Apache issue, and they want a CVE name for it, they have to come to us first. So we can funnel everything into that one same process. Now, if that sounds like a lot of busy work, security soaker ban and moving issues around, it really is. Um, we also provide advice, but it's mostly around how to handle those vulnerability reports or how to deal with those most the complex or critical issues. 
Like most of Apache, we are volunteers and it's a very small team with only a couple of people active at any one time. It's work, it's really hard to get volunteers to do. And I'm lucky in that Red Hat pays for me to work on Apache security handling. So I say we provide a policy for handling vulnerability reports. But if you're an Apache member or heard any of the talks about the foundation, you'll know that Apache, we separate organizational oversight from technical oversight. Projects will see the foundation as a service provider and a mentor. The board and the security team offer help and guidance, but not official orders or technical decision making. That's up to the projects who are responsible for their own code community and direction. And each project is based again on completely of volunteers. So many, although many are paid by companies to work on code, they participate as individuals. That's the Apache way and that's what works. So that said, while there are a few actual policies, those that do exist are important and must be followed by all the projects. We have policies around branding to protect the Apache trademark and policies to protect the provenance of code. Of course, we have a common license too. And the steps that projects must go through to handle their security issues, that's a default policy. And it's default because with 300 odd projects, there's always gonna be a few edge cases. And so projects could choose if they wish to change some of those steps. They have to get our approval at the security committee and they have to publish that on their web pages, but it is possible to do so. Similarly, it's okay for projects to decide what's in and out of scope for being a security vulnerability. For example, projects that have a network service may decide to only treat attacks as denial of service attacks if they consume non-linear resources. And while the security team oversee issues in our project's code, it's the infrastructure team who oversee handling security issues affecting our infrastructure. That's the security of our virtual machines, our websites, email, and so on. Apache Info also have a few policies that projects must abide to, including how code is stored, updated, protected, distributed, and how it's signed. All releases are signed using GPG, GPG detached signatures, usually by the individual from the project who's the release manager for that release. And we distribute the key file so you know who from each project has authority to sign a release. Um, other things to note for future uh, slides is that for the most part, Apache projects distribute source code, not binaries. Occasionally there are convenience binaries distributed alongside the source code. And while some projects do use GitHub, it's not a primary development mechanism or our main release distribution mechanism. Consistency is the key here. That means as a user of Apache software, you can expect that security vulnerabilities will get handled timely and consistently. And by timely, I do mean that some projects receive an awful lot of reports and have an awfully low number of people to deal with them. So the initial triage has to identify and prioritize which ones matter the most, which ones are the most severe. And then some of the lower severity issues can take a little time. Right now, as I'm talking, we have 87 open issues across 40 projects. 60 have been accepted with CVE names. Those are ones that are just waiting for the final patch or for a release. And the median time all those ones are open was 79 days. Vulnerabilities get CVE names published to the CVE project website. That's every issue across every Apache project, including the ones we find internally. We're not trying to game things here, not trying to reduce artificially uh, issue counts. Security advisories for all the projects are sent to at least two lists in common. And we create transparency reports every year so you can see how well we're doing. So why is this all important? In 2020, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, well, wow, that's a lot of securities, released the top 10 routinely exploited vulnerabilities list. And that included this remote code execution vulnerability in Apache Structs 2. It's included in the list, even though it was an issue disclosed and fixed in 2017. The issue is known to be exploited in the wild. This is the issue that Equifax stated has caused their large security data breach that year. So here we are, Strips fixed the issue. They did the updates. They published a security advisory in a CVE before anyone exploited the issue. And it was two months later that Equifax got exploited on an unpatched version of Struts. And of course, every week there's a security supply chain issue in the news. So let's pop back to that executive order. It's wanting companies to ensure the integrity and provenance of any open source software they use. And so far, NIST has developed several guidelines based on that order. It's basically 
do these things and you're most likely to produce more secure software. And here's the one on code verification. It specifies the things a project should be doing, manual threat modeling, automated testing, running static analysis tools, doing dynamic analysis. They're talking about dependencies and ensuring you pick dependencies that don't lower your standards and fixing security issues, of course. Many of our Apache projects do some of these analysis things, but we don't capture which ones do and which don't. And we don't have any way to share the experiences of what works and what doesn't. And this stuff isn't easy to do. Take dependency analysis. GitHub started notifying us a year or so ago when a project included a dependency with a security issue in it. Except we got these automated notifications every day. And these tools are just doing version matches. They can't tell if the Apache project is actually using the dependency in a way that exposes it to the security issue. And when our projects actually look at these notices and spend time on them, they found in nearly all the cases, the vulnerabilities are not exposed. They're not relevant. And when you've got dependencies of dependencies, this just gets worse. So as a user of Apache code, you're likely to get daily alerts from your third party tools you've bought, listing all the dependency CVEs, and you're likely then to go to Apache with that shopping list. So as a project, you've got a choice. Do you spend a lot of time every week investigating every dependency security issue, figuring out which ones are actually relevant and which ones are not and cherry picking them? Or do you just rebase your project to the latest versions? But for a project of any size, you can't be rebasing your project every few days either. So many Apache projects just rebase dependencies when they put out new versions, unless in the meantime, it can be shown that there's some severe issue that is a dependency issue that does affect them. But in the meantime, all those security scanners are show red. The Sonatype 2021 report that just came out last week even states that to minimize risk, select the open source projects which update dependencies the quickest. I mentioned OpenSSF, the Open Source Software Foundation, and I'm a founding board member. It's a Linux Foundation project, and we've been looking at quite closely at ways to improve the security of open source through a number of different projects. And recently also looking at how those projects align to the executive order. OpenSSF is comprised of a number of working groups, each of which has a number of individual projects. And these working groups and projects are all open. You, anyone can attend the meeting or contribute, you can read the minutes. You don't need to be a member of OpenSSF. And I'm hoping today that some of these projects might interest you as we need some ASF help to make them useful and more importantly, accurate for us. So vulnerability disclosures, even though our process for Apache is consistent, as I've just explained and well established, and we'd probably already likely meet any executive order guidelines, there might be useful work here to provide our disclosures in a common format. We create a J JSON CVE format at the moment. We could perhaps provide that or in a database of common, um, a more common consumable format. The executive order has a directive to be able to identify what's critical. And the securing critical projects working group are working to figure out which open source projects are critical. It's based on things like the number of contributors, the project age, the number of releases, and so on. But it's very GitHub centric. And GitHub isn't our primary development mechanism. So at the moment, it doesn't match Apache very well at all. Uh, for example, the Apache web server isn't even in the top of 1,000. We need to help them with that. Security best practices. They have a scorecard project which rates open source projects based on a number of criteria, such as having CI tests, code review, security policies, sign releases, and so on. Again, it uses GitHub data for the most part, very GitHub centric, and so scores for Apache projects are very, very poor because they don't know how to look at what our projects are actually doing. This working group has a secure software development fundamentals course, edX course. This is an awesome free course. If you take away one thing from this talk and you're a developer, go, go and do that course. Those that remember the CII badge program, well, that was rolled up here too. There's a handful of Apache projects with badges, but it's not something we previously advocated. Now, the executive order was focused around maintaining trusted supply chains, and the OpenSSF have a SALSA framework designed to, help, designed to help guide projects through supply chain threats and controls, and an all-star project designed to help uh, GitHub projects enforce it. And then collating that criticality score badge and scorecard is a portal at metrics.opensf.org meant to answer questions like, what can I do to improve my project? 
but also for consumers, what project should I choose or how do I identify less risky projects? This is an alpha portal, but it publishes metrics like this for our projects at Apache. And it's certainly worth us looking at how to help understand them to get the data correct in the way to match how we develop our software. So from time to time, third parties come along and they want to help improve the security of some Apache project. We've had organizations organize bug bounties for some projects, others are paid for audits. It's important these groups work with us though to ensure that they understand how to interact with our communities and properly filter reports. So we're not overloading our volunteers, but we're still handling things properly. That's exceedingly important right now, as companies say they're investing hundreds of millions in enhancing open source security. It's certainly headline grabbing, and it's likely well-meaning, but it's gonna take more than throwing money at the problem. You can't just create a new standard or process in a vacuum and expect it to work for every open source project. You need to invest time working with each project's community to figure out what they actually need and what will help. And just as open source as a whole isn't one thing or one community, neither is Apache. And that's an important thing to help these organizations understand. We sign using GPG, and although it's widely available and we encourage using it, it certainly isn't the most intuitive system for verifying downloads, nor is it really set up for dealing with chains of trust. So the Six Door project's interesting. They've got a let's encrypt type model and looking at how do you make signing low friction really easy and that meets the way developers are actually working and publishing code today. Project will certainly look at uh, for Apache in the future. I've kind of skipped talking about software bills and materials, despite it being a huge part of the executive order. The basic idea here is that companies need to publish machine readable lists of all the parts inside them. There's all sorts of open standards and tools for doing this. I think for Apache though, what it means is companies are about to discover just how much they, they actually depend on open source and Apache projects. And that's really the answer as to why Apache needs to get involved in these things. They can actually help improve security. So some of these projects end up helping produce more secure open source projects, then that's a great outcome. But let's help them do it in a way that matches how we work at Apache. So whilst each Apache project is responsible for the technical aspects of dealing with their own code, and while we want to minimize the actual number of policies, that doesn't mean we can't find areas of commonality. And so with that in mind, we started an open security mailing list in our community PMC security-discuss at community.apache.org. And the uh, shortened URL is there, which I'll paste into the chat momentarily. Um, and that takes you to the same place. Our aim is, let's look at the recommended practices. Let's see what's worked for other Apache projects. And let's see how we can help initiatives such as those in the OpenSSF work for us. So if that interests you, please come join us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks, Rich. A few years ago, um, somebody looked through some of the uh, popular operating systems out there and determined that pretty much every computer you ever use has Apache software on it. And did you know that every computer on the planet Mars has Apache software on it? So uh, yeah, this is gonna be a really interesting initiative to watch. Our next keynote is Anil Inamdar, and I'm gonna again step off stage for just a moment to do the sound check, and I will be back in less than a minute.